Hi, Andrew here from MyNextTablet.com. Today was an unboxing video of the brand new Microsoft Surface Pro 10 for business. All right, let's start with the unboxing of the Microsoft Surface Pro 10 for business that's available in the US and pretty much everywhere now, starting at 1,199 US dollars, so still quite expensive. Since this is a business tablet, we don't get a nice packaging. We get pretty much just a cardboard box here. And inside that box, we have the surface itself first, then the standard paper stuff, also a charger with the Surface Connect port, just like with the predecessors. And I've gotten the new keyboard as well. And inside that box, we get the keyboard, of course, with the new AI button. We will look at that later. And then again, some paperwork for that keyboard. And that's it, nothing else inside the box. And as usual, since I shot the first part of this video, a couple of hours have passed already and I ran a couple of benchmarks and compared it with the Surface Pro 9, which I still have over here. I've been using it quite a bit in the last year or so. So we're getting um, similar design, basically the same design as with the predecessor, quite thick black screen bezels at the top and bottom. On the sides, the bezels are quite thin. We are getting two pretty nice speakers here on the side, stereo speakers. On the bottom here, we get the connector for the keyboard cover. Then we've got the Surface Connect port here. Then we've got some slots here for fans. Actually, I'm not sure that should have active fans. I'm pretty sure it has active fans, but so far I didn't notice them. But in any case, the air fans here are very well hidden like with the predecessor. We get a power, like a volume rocker here, a power button. And on this side, we've got two USB-C 4 ports that also support Thunderbolt 4. So that's nice to see. No headphone jack anymore and also no micro SD card slot anymore. On the back, we're getting a camera that has a resolution of 10.5 megapixels. And we still get this very nice kickstand here that you can fold out very wide. And that's quite nice, especially if you're on a standing desk like I am right now, and then you want to draw or write something with the pen. So I always like that you can fold out the kickstand so fast, so far. And yeah, like I said, no micro SD card slot anymore. It used to be here, but it's gone. But we do have a replaceable easily replaceable SSD hidden underneath this cover. You don't need any tool to take this apart, but if you actually want to take out that SSD, you have to get a screwdriver to get it out, but it's very easy as you can see. In fact, one feature, one new feature of the Surface Pro 10 is that it gets more and more easier to repair it. That's something Microsoft is working on, so that's quite nice to see. Another new thing with the design is actually on the front and that is the front facing camera, which is a tiny bit bigger than with the predecessor and it still supports Windows Hello facial recognition to unlock the tablet quite easily and uh, securely, much more secure than with many Android tablets and similar to Apple's Face ID. We get additional depth sensors for that. And the resolution has gotten higher. It's 12.2 megapixels now. And you can record videos in 1440p before you could only record full HD videos. And let me open the camera because it has some new AI features. First of all, it's very wide angle as you can see, which is quite nice. And you can also see that it zooms in because it has all those AI features. You can access them here. This is the like follow feature that also the iPhone I mean, the iPad Pro has, I'm not sure if the iPhone has it, but the iPad Pro has it for sure. It's a quite nice feature. Then it can make that you have eye contact with the camera while you're looking at the screen and you can activate background effects like um, make the background blurry, which always is nice to see. It should work quite well with those step sensors and this new AI ship apparently is pretty good at these things. And well, we've seen it works. Not the most amazing feature, but also quite useful in times of home office and Zoom and Microsoft Teams and so on. It is 9.3 millimeters thin, quite thin for a Windows device, not so thin 
for a tablet and it weighs 879 grams which again is very light for a windows device but actually not that light for a tablet but still pretty good yeah pretty good for a windows tablet i think now let's get to the display which is the highlight of this new tablet because it has gotten brighter we're getting 600 nits now compared to 450 nits of the surface pro 9 which means it's actually as bright as the 11 inch ipad pro now and there are only very very few tablets that are 600 nits or brighter and the surface pro 10 for business is one of them now which is nice to see it has some anti-reflective coating and i've got a bright light here studio light and it doesn't reflect as bad actually so that's nice we got a 13 inch display here and a quite a high resolution of 2880 by 1920 pixels so i can stack them so on they look quite sharp which is nice we've got a great viewing angles and the surface screen with its pixel sense technology has been great in the past and it still is pretty nice so overall i like the screen i also like that we're getting a 120 hertz display here but out of the box it only has 60 hertz turned on so to activate 120 hertz you go to system you go to display then you scroll down a bit and you have to go to extended view and then you can choose between 60 hertz and 120 hertz or dynamic if you want to save a bit of battery life you can go to dynamic or 60 hertz and otherwise i'd suggest you to use the full potential of this really nice display now on this display you can write with the microsoft slim pen 2 that you have to buy separately but you can also get the surface pen from the predecessors all these surface styluses work with the surface pro 10 which is really nice to see that microsoft doesn't change the standard like lenovo for example does for some reason well so you can write on it this pen is pressure sensitive it's quite light made of plastic has one button on the side one button on the top and you charge it using this little bay here of the keyboard cover and when you buy these things like i said you have to buy the accessories separately you have to make sure that you get this keyboard cover with the slot for the pen because you can get the keyboard cover without the slot as well and then you cannot charge it like this while it's attached to the tablet which is a cool feature but that's just something you have to look out for when you're buying the surface pro 10 for business like i said you can also get previous pens that have a battery inside that you don't have to charge this way so it's not that big of a deal if you don't have this keyboard cover with this slot for the pen but it's just something to look out for the pen works great especially if you write something in microsoft onenote i think this tablet onenote and the surface pen or slim pen just work really well together obviously you can also install photoshop and edit photos with photoshop on the surface using the pen but this is just not a um, graphics tablet it's more of a business tablet but you could do that just if you want to use photoshop i would suggest you to get more ram i've got the 8 gigabyte version which works with photoshop but is quite little like you should get 16 or 32 gigabyte for photoshop inside the surface pro 10 for business sits an intel core ultra 5 135 u chipset or an ultra 7 165 u and you can get eight up to 64 gigabyte of ram and the ssd can be between 256 gigabyte and one terabyte in size but obviously you could also get a larger ssd and change it very easily yourself there's no 5g or 4g option at the moment but it does support nfc and wi-fi 6e you can see my geekbench 6 benchmark comparison here and you can see that the performance of the pro 10 is just a little bit faster than the pro 9 really not that much and i think that just because these intel chips from generation to generation don't actually improve that much there are supposed to be new ai features that the chipset supports that maybe the benchmarks don't reflect but to take full advantage of this ai stuff i think we still have to wait a couple of months or even years until the proper applications have been developed but maybe in my final review i already will see some differences when using the windows ai features i will test that for my final review of course 
By the way, I also ran Geekbench 5, and you can see here in my benchmark comparison that in Geekbench 5, the Pro 9 is actually faster than the Pro 10. And I'm not sure if this benchmark is totally fair because I'm, I don't know which exact version of Geekbench 5 I was running on the Pro 9, and Geekbench doesn't support officially Geekbench 5 anymore. Like you can only download 6 from the website. That's why I showed you Geekbench 6 now. But um, just to see a comparison here in Geekbench 5 compared to the iPad, of course, and some Android tablets, it will be interesting for you to see. And no matter which other benchmarks I will be running for my final review, I'm pretty sure that the performance difference also in my real life gaming test won't be as big compared to the Pro 9. It's just that these Intel chips don't improve that much from generation to generation. Now let's look at this keyboard cover. Um, it's also new. It is supposed to be improved a bit. It has a background light. It has a slot for the pen, but like I said, you can also get it without the pen. And it has this new Windows AI or Microsoft AI Copilot button, which we can test out. So we connect the keyboard to the tablet magnetically, exactly like with the predecessors. In fact, it should work with the predecessor. And I like that we've got this little magnetic bar on the side of the display, so you can angle the keyboard a bit. If you fold it down, the screen is protected. Then you fold out the kickstand, you fold out the keyboard, you use the Windows Hello Facial Recognition to unlock it, and then you can use the new AI button here. It works quite well. And I will explore all those Windows AI features for my final review. It's running Windows 11 Pro, of course. The keyboard itself works great. I typed with it a little bit. I compared it to the keyboard of the Pro 9 as well. And as far as I can tell, they are very, very, very similar, if not almost identical. But they work great. Like with the predecessors, I always liked these type covers for Microsoft. And it's the same with the Pro 10 for business. So much um, with this unboxing video and so much about the Microsoft Surface Pro 10 for business. I've got to start my proper review now and I'm quite excited to review it properly even though, like I said, not that much has changed. If you have the Surface Pro 9, I don't think it will be worth it for you to get the Pro 10. But if you are looking to get a new Windows tablet, a new high-end Windows tablet, then the Pro 10 offers better features. As far as I can tell, of course, we get a brighter display, this new AI button, a bit better camera, newer processors. They might not be that much faster, but who knows, maybe with some AI features, um, when you test those benchmarks, they will be faster. We will see that for the final review. And yeah, what do you think about this Pro 10 for business? I hope Microsoft will release a consumer version with an OLED display. But let's see, maybe they will release such a device, maybe not. So much about the Microsoft Surface Pro 10 for business. Subscribe to the channel to see my final review of this Windows tablet. And if you're looking for a bit smaller Windows tablet, a bit cheaper Windows tablet, check out my full review of the Microsoft Surface Go 4. It's quite a bit weaker than the Pro 10, but it's also meant for business users and it's quite a bit cheaper.